Okay, as always, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen that will bring you to a full playlist of the videos, and I'm putting out a new one every Wednesday. And we're working within Python 3 here. And in previous tutorials, I showed you how to get user input, such as this. We can say x equals to put uh, the user input into the variable x. And we can say input, and we give it a prompt. Enter your name. And if I type in Bob, x now equals Bob. We can see that by using x. And you can see that it's a string because it has quotations around it. So let's say we wanted to do this. By the way, I'm hitting up arrow to go back through the previous commands. I'll say enter a number. And now it's saying enter a number. And I'll type in the number 8 just as an example. So now x equals 8, but it equals it as a string. So if I was to try to do x plus 2, and I hit enter, it gives me an error, as we've talked about in the last two videos, because you can't add a string to a um, integer, which is a whole number. So that's a problem. So you could, at this point, uh, take uh, x and say x equals integer x. So now x is an integer. You can see when I display it here, it doesn't have the quotations around it, and I can say x plus 2. But you don't need to have that extra little change after the fact. You can do it as the user's inputting the number. And it's very simple. We can say x equals, and instead of going directly into our input, which outputs a string, our input command our input function outputs a string. We have another function called integer, which we just use for x. But since this command's outputting a string, and that's what we're converting later on anyway, we can put it right in here. So we can say integer input enter a number. And now if I hit enter, it's going to say enter a number. And what it's going to do is I enter a string of 8, and it's going to go, OK. Before we put that into x, we're going to convert that to an integer and then put it in x. But it's all done in one line and one command. Um, so if you know that the user is supposed to be entering a number, an integer, a whole number, that's what you would do there. And now I can say x plus 2 and it equals 10 without having to have a second command. We're still using the same number of commands. We're just doing it in one line, basically. Uh, and of course, you could also do the same thing. Uh, so I hit up arrows a few times to go back. I can say float, which is a number with a decimal point. So I can say 8. And now if I display 8, you can see um, that it doesn't look like a float. It should, though. Oh, <laughs> I put 8. X. X is 8 as a float, 8.0. And um, so now I can say x plus 2, and we get 10 with a 0, because again, as I said previously, uh, even if one number is an integer, if you're adding an integer to a float, the outcome is going to be a float with a decimal point. But let's say you ask the user to enter a number, and you they enter a decimal, and you don't want it to be a decimal. We can go back up to our command as an integer, and we can say enter a number, and I can say 2.2, .2, and when I hit enter, it's going to give you an error there as well. So if you think they might be entering a um, a uh, 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 decimal point. Sorry, I had a little brain cramp there for a second. Uh, you have to make sure that they either know not to enter a decimal point, but you never know what an end user is going to do. Or we could say float and in parentheses like this. So what this is saying is, OK, display this prompt, enter a number. We're, we're using the input function there, which creates a string. And we're taking that string, and we're converting it to a float. And then we're taking that float. Did I put my parentheses? Yeah, my parentheses are right. And, and then we're going to convert it to an integer. So I'll hit Enter now. Now I can say 2.2 .2 and hit Enter. And if I display what x equals, it equals 2. It removed that decimal point. It gave me the integer, the whole number, the, the, the whole number portion of it on the left side of the decimal. So 
take that into account. If you want a whole number, you'll have to do that. If you think the user might enter a decimal point, you might want to do this, even though you say in your message something like, enter a number, no decimals, I, moles. yes, that is not right at all. But <laughs> anyway, enter, and you can tell the user not to do something, and there will still be users who do that because people don't read what's on the screen. Um, so putting that float in there will help prevent that error if the person does put it in because that could cause problems down the line. You can also check it after the fact, but uh, in my mind, it's easier just to fix the problem without even having to check it. Um, you will still have an issue if they actually type in a word. So let's say I say enter a number and they enter Bob. It's going to give you an error. So that's something you need to check and we'll get into that in later tutorials. But this is the same for the same reason that we had in the previous one that um, if you take a float, make it a string and then try to convert it to an integer, it does not work. Um, so that's basically the same thing that's happening here. Uh, so that's why we go from the string to a float because regardless of whether that string is an integer or a float, a float can handle it. And then once it's a float, we can now convert it to an integer. Okay. So again, I took something simple and might have confused you a little bit of it, but I showed you how basically how to get the user input as a number that you can later on use in mathematical equations. Um, so that was the point of today's tutorial. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying all these tutorials. New one every Wednesday on Python 3 for the coming months. Again, uh, you know, you might be watching this years from now, and at which point I probably won't be doing Python three videos anymore on Wednesdays. But for the time being, that's what Wednesday videos are. Uh, you can check out the annotation on the screen for the playlist. Go ahead clicking on that. And um, also I have other videos currently being posted. Uh, my current schedule is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, different topics on each day, as well as a bunch of videos. I've been doing this for years. I have plenty of videos uh, and playlists. Visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. You can search through all my videos and playlists there, as well as get links to my social networking sites, uh, Google+, Facebook, Twitter. Unless you're watching this five years from now on Facebook and and, and Google Plus are gone. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in five years? But that's what my website currently displays, as well as a link to our IRC channel, which is the current place where you can come talk to me and other people. Not that I'm in there 24-7, but uh, go ahead. Come and join us there. All that on my website, filmsatchris.com. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope that you have a great day.